Hello friends, welcome to this new episode. In this episode, we will discuss about MDG version 2023 release upgrade issues and fixes which we promised um, in our previous uh, videos. So let us go into the presentation and discuss in detail. So the first important thing is we have to close all the open CRs. It is a mandatory thing to do. So if you have open CRs, you have to process them all or finally reject them all or delete them using the report USMD underscore delete underscore C request. And the second thing is activate all the business functions. So this is mandatory thing. You cannot, uh, you know, switch up certain business functions like the previous version, and then you can activate later and then use the functionality. It is not like this from the version 2021. If I can remember that you cannot keep uh, the business functions switched off. You must have to activate all the business functions. So in this case, if you upgrade to 2023, you're supposed to activate these business functions. And the next thing is read the release information note, which is very important. So SAP put all the information that you need to execute mandatorily, yeah, before the upgrade and after the upgrade. So please go through this release information so uh, notes so that you get uh, ideas and then um, you know about how to approach the upgrade, particularly for the MDG component. So this is the common release information note, and this is for the uh, MDGM, and this is for the MDG BP. So the next one is feature. So you have to know what features are provided by SAP in this version. Yeah, based on that, you could understand like which areas are mostly affected and what kind of side effects you could expect. So, and also you have to gate uh, your end users uh, for these uh, new features and then you can incorporate these changes so that uh, they will benefit from uh, these upgrade. Okay, so let's discuss about upgrade issues and the fixes. So the first issue we came across is uh, MDG BP relationship, uh, the UIB component is changed from BS BP relations to the ATS based list, BSBP relations, ATS. And uh, if you are using the relationship type, you're supposed to use from the newer version in this, this UABB, and please apply this SAP note. And then the next thing is we faced the inconsistency in the MDGM on a such. So in this case, uh, you have to regenerate the such application. For that, go to the T code MDGMG and then click on the create search view and then click on the generate button then the search view will be regenerated then the issue will be fixed okay so the next one is workflow objects are locked even after the activation so for an example once the cr is activated yeah the objects are released automatically the material id is released business uh, partner is released but it didn't happen in our case and um, after the activation step we call the system call method to update uh, certain data in the material master but the material master was already locked you know even after the activation by the standard uh, programs and then we use the standard function module in the system call method to update this material and it was failing because the uh, material is already locked, material ID is already locked. So in this case, we will uh, create an incident to SAP, but uh, it, is, it is still pending. So we didn't get uh, reply, proper reply. And uh, so if you face the same issue, uh, to solve it temporarily, you have to DQ uh, your uh, business partner and the material master ID. For that, you can use these function modules and then also create a SAP incident so that you get a standard solution. And the next one is AD Nation field has changed. So in this new version, um, before we used a space for AD Nation, now it has changed to Ash. So if you have some performance issue or dumps around this field, please apply this as notes. And the next one is downboard fields back to standard. So yeah, if you are using any custom fields for the standard, you have to now check and uh, see if SAP provides a standard field support, then you have to switch it back to standard. Otherwise, you will face some inconsistency, particularly in the SMT mapping. For an example, in this case, we, we used a return supplier. Yeah, we created a custom field before and we were using it. 
and then we also created a comment for the uh, standard communication as a custom field now sap provides standard fields so in this case we have to switch it back to standard which is very important otherwise the smt programs will cause some inconsistencies so the once you switch it back you have to you know remove your custom fields from your data model and then uh, you have to uh, remove it from your ui and the smt mapping and all the backend enhancement once we once you did it then run this report smt delete catalog to remove all the if you face a dump particularly for an example you are facing dump for the purchase organization control data when you enter some data then you have to run this report to delete the generated uh, programs of the smt so when you open the ui once again it will generate the program and the issue will be fixed and the next one is unnecessary logs for jitin during the cr check so if you face some jitin issue please implement this sap note and the next one is material master created by the field is updated with the workflow user yeah so before the created by field was updated with the user who really created the material but after the uh, 2023 it was it is updated by the workflow user and even the changed by field so changed by field was also updated before by the user who updated or activated who created the material but now it is updated by the workflow user so we created sap incident for that and then uh, smp came back and told us that so it's the same concept now applies for mdgm also because it in the mdgbp it was like that uh, you know the changed by field was always the workflow user so now it applies also to mdgm but they also agreed that the created by field should be updated by the user who created this material. So they, they told us that they will provide a S note, but they haven't provided so far, but we will receive it. And then uh, once you apply that S note, uh, this field will be updated by the user who created the material. So these are the UIBB components. Uh, you will see additionally two more fields uh, when you open a UI after the right after the upgrade uh, those fields are like uh, valid from valid to date if you don't want those fields in your UI because you are not using this time dependency thing then you can customize and remove these fields otherwise in the field property body you can hide these fields and then the next one is in code term location to field so before the field uh, name was inco 2 now it is uh, inco 2 l So we had a derivation based on inco 2 l So after the upgrade didn't work, so we had to switch back to this field, yeah, inco 2 l Then it started working. Okay, so next is a permitted pay shorting order. I'm not sure if this is applicable for you guys. Yeah, in our uh, system is a code deployment where our customers are still checking the BPT code, uh, not just MDG BP. So in this case, we had an issue where the permitted pay is still shorted in a wrong way. So if that is the case, you have to apply this S note. And the next one is the additional identification type. So in our case, we are just using two identification type, but uh, after the upgrade, we add one more identification type popped up in the system and then hide this uh, identification type by redefining the feeder class. And then we implemented the method get attribute value set. You can do the same if you have this problem okay so the next one is delta buffer not supplied with all attributes of the ad postal entity in the custom bed so we had this issue for an example we had some derivations based on ad postal and whenever we update certain field in the address master data particularly let's say it's city then in the cross entity body the city was not appeared in the uh, in the in importing parameter then our derivations you know not working properly then we reached out to sap and they told us to implement this note and then the issue got fixed okay so the next one is based may practice for the maintenance status so now you know from uh, 2023 onwards we are using unified product api yeah okay so as you know from the version 2023 we are using unified product api so this uses cds uh, nodes to uh, derive the maintenance status but in our case uh, we wanted to derive a quality data so we said um, we always derive qm atv field um, you know automatically to ABAP true it was working before and uh, you know so that the and then the quality management view is also extended in the material master 
but after the upgrade um, the you know if you want to set this field you also have to um, you know input the inf inspection setup and then you have to set it active so it didn't work for us and um, many customers i know that to extend the additional view they created a custom field yeah and then they derive this field otherwise they will uh, use smt transformation class to influence this thing so all these things won't work after 2023 and if you wanted to add additional view to the uh, material master done in that case um, you have to influence this field in the CDS nodes. So the next thing is the authorization issue. So uh, our te we tested um, our uh, all these things in the in our quality system, and our test user IDs faced these kind of authorization problems. So if you face the same authorization issues, check uh, SE53 T code and then uh, get the help of a basis team to fix this one and to keep an eye particularly on this players also and the next one is the read api issue with the custom entity so we used particularly this api to read all the data of the entities in the custom derivation body but uh, particularly for certain uh, custom entities it didn't ret return the value properly then we identified there is a threshold for reading the tables, which is, uh, so in our case, we use a lot of custom entities, so it reached more than 98. Then we had to apply this S note uh, to fix it. Then it started working. And then guys, uh, the last thing is our recommendation. So we really recommend you to go with the FS FPS 01 version. No, you go with this upgrade version instead of FES00 because this one contains really a lot of bugs. And then uh, try to upgrade the system performance of, uh, after SAP releases the new version so that you won't be the first one finding out all the issues. By the time you upgrade the FES01, the next version, most of the S nodes will be available in the SAP portal. So this way you could save the budget. But in our case, we had to start a little early because we had some side effects uh, from the previous component and uh, so we had no option other than to upgrade our system so we went with the upgrade and faced a lot of issues but uh, for all this issue there is a sap note and also sap provides strong support so it's not the case they also provided uh, support very quickly and uh, they so support wise they improved a lot compared to before so nowadays they are providing excellent support i would say so these are the guys uh, we faced in our system but but it could be more in your system because we are not using all the functionalities so maybe you are using consolidation more so there also there could be some issues though so therefore i put all the sap notes together with this presentation in this video and uh, uh, those notes are you know particularly for FES 00 and 01 so if you face some issue you can search this s note and then uh, apply in your system if it fixes the issue okay then otherwise you can contact sap they will provide us thank you so much guys for watching this video and then i will also come back uh, shortly with another video until then please take care of yourself and have a nice day bye bye